make a new script, give the class a name, override the initializer method, slap some variables on it, call it with the new method, and you're done. Hey everyone, it's Timmy Gobbles, and today I'm going to be doing a short tutorial on how to make custom types in Godot in uh, GD Script. So you're going to need to make a just its own standalone script for the new type. Uh, you can extend object or node or kind of whatever you want. And what I found most useful was object or resource. Resource if I wanted to save something. So here, um, just for this initial one, I'm going it off with object. So one of the key things that I like to, to load, be able to auto load some stuff in there or do some stuff when I make a new one. I just, I, I like the option to put something in there. So the way you do that is with this underscore in it uh, method. And so what you need to do is in that function, you need to tell your new class what it needs to do when you make a new one of it. So if we, if we have a variable in there, there's almost like no reason to make a new type unless you have something specific you want to do that you can't do with the built-in nodes in Gitto. Um, and there might even just be nodes that do what you want to do and you just don't know about them. But, you know, maybe you have a specific idea, like I want an inventory system or I want to save specific bits of your character data. Maybe you want to make a damage class that has a bunch of different types of damage and you know, your whatever function you have that handles damage needs these different types to pass through it. And it's just easier to make a new class instead of having a bunch of variables all scattered around. But my key inspiration for figuring this out was because I come from a MATLAB background and that, that's what I used in school. And I never really, I, I didn't do the good thing and learn C++ and Python. I just was like, ah, oh, well, I. I get MATLAB for free because I go to college and the college pays for my license. So I'll just use that whenever I need to do any programming stuff. And so now I'm really spoiled with all of the built-in features that MATLAB has specifically to do with matrices. And you might never need to deal with matrices ever, but um, for me, it was something I used a lot. So it's something I'm familiar with. And so I, I kind of missed that. I wanted to make a in the last game I was making, I wanted to make a, a map that determines how many like enemies are spawned and what types of enemies are spawned. And I wanted that map to update over time. And the, the best way I can think of doing it is by having a matrix that stores that kind of data. Okay, so what else do we want to put in here? Oh, it's so yeah, one of the other things you can do with your custom type is you can give it functions. Like maybe I want to add two of my types. So my type has one variable, which is number of potatoes. So I, I have the number of potatoes variable. And if I want to add another of this type, I want to add the potatoes together and store them, store them in the number of potatoes in this one, in this member. And another thing you might want to do is be able to, one of, one of the things that's really helpful for troubleshooting is to be able to print out what the potato, you know, print out your type. So either printing out all the variables or structuring it in a way that makes sense. That way, if you ever get caught up and something isn't what it should be, you have an easy way to display what's in that variable. So now I want to show off um, what I was using in my last project with the matrix and the threat map and all that junk. But I got all these screens, let's get, get these out of here. So I have a mesh size. And so that converts like a position to an index, basically. And then number of rows, number of columns tells you how big the threat map is in terms of the matrix, like the number of indices. And then the threat matrix contents was what I was talking about, where I had to convert my matrix into an array. And then the threat growth margin is, um, I have an algorithm for whether or not tiles 
grow in difficulty based on the surrounding tiles. So that's just a value that's, it's a variable that I can use to adjust that. All right, so that's kind of the gist of what it's doing. Now I want to be able to, I, I didn't, I never got to displaying it in my game. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is build some UI elements that are gonna display that threat map to make it easier for you to see that it's actually doing something. So let's go ahead and scroll through a bit here. Okay, so if I'm looking at my HUD class, this isn't a class, this is a scene. I'm looking at my HUD scene, we can add in a new panel on the bottom and we can slap some elements onto it. So on the bottom left, I want to display my row index and my column index. And on the bottom right, I want to display the threat value. So there, sometimes it's nice just to make sure that these things are visible with some dummy values. All right, so these sizes look fine and we can go into making a function to display that info. So if I want to update the grid, okay, so we wanna take a row and column index and then set those into, uh, so we have to change their types to strings, and then we wanna make them the text on those two labels on the bottom left. Then we wanna update the threat on the, we wanna update the label on the right, the bottom right. Um, so what I do is I multiply it by 100, and then I convert it to an integer, which just rounds it off to a flat value, you know, a, a round number. And so then I convert it to a string and then it's, it's ready to be passed as the text of that label. And I do that because the threat matrix has values between zero and one. And those aren't like easy to see them change. So it was a little easier to read values from zero to a hundred. Okay, and then we need to tell world to update that. So in the physics process of world, I need to tell the HUD that I want to, one, I want to, I want to call those methods, and two, I want to pass the values from the threat matrix. And I remember that I have this coordinate to index function that takes in a position and sends out a um, vector to UI. So I'm going to go ahead and change this x int y int to just position as a vector to UI. That was a little easier to do. So then now that I've done that, I need to change um, x, y to uh, pos.x, pos.x, dot y. So a really easy fix. All right, and then, do, 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 do. Okay, so we need to call the, we need to call the coordinate to index function from threat map that I've already forgotten the name, so. Observe as I dither. And we want to pass the player position into that function. So that's going to take the player position, convert that to a vector, an integer vector of indices. And then that's going to go to our HUD script and it's going to update those labels. Then we're also going to want to update the threat map thing. We're going to make this just one function, huh? That would have been fine. Why? Let's hurry up, Patrick. All right. And I forgot the, the name again. So now we need to call the threat map and we need to get the threat at an XY. And again, we need to pass in the player position. So I, I have my player saved as player reference, and then we just need to do dot position. All right, and it's ready to test out. All right, cool, and it seems to be working. I have it set so um, when you're near the little player space station, it stays at zero. And now that we've gone out a little bit and it's spawning some enemies, it's dropping. So it, anytime we spawn an enemy, it reduces that threat value, or it should be. 
and it's already back to 100, so you know, I'm probably probably done something wrong. But I usually do, so that's, that's just the way it is, you know. Okay, so uh, it took me a little longer to get this video out due to, you know, the holidays are coming up, so, you know, where I'm seeing more family. I don't have as much time on my hands. I gotta do a bunch of Christmassy things related to my kids and family and all that stuff. Um, I was going to make a little wrap-up video about how my the game jam went that I submitted to. And I don't know that I'm going to get that done before next weekend. I'll try, but no promises. And if it's not done, then, you know, I'll have something out the weekend after. Or maybe like midweek, you know, between Christmas and New Year's. But yeah, you know, it... it uh, I hope everybody, you know, I hope everyone has a, a good little holiday season. And if you get a chance to try out my game, I greatly appreciate it. It's on my itch right now. It looks very unpolished because it is very unpolished. Um, but, you know, I promise it sort of works. <laughs> I don't know. All right, y'all have a good one. Peace.